this is not your grandfather's trivet. It's actually my grandfather's trivet. He's made a bunch of them. He gifted me this one, and I liked it so much that I put it in my book, Make Your Own Damn Kitchen Tools. And today, we're gonna make a bunch and give them away. Today's video is brought to us by Squarespace. This is some locally grown cherry that comes from my grandfather's friend, so thank you, Al. It does come rough, so I had to mill it up, and now I'm here at the table saw. There are some defects that I gotta work around. I don't know how many I'm gonna get. I'm just gonna go with the flow today. If we get one, we get one. If I'm able to get four or five, we get four or five. I'm just following the steps here in my book, and step two says I need to cut one and a quarter inch strips here at the table saw. Don't be thinking you need a big fancy table saw to do this. You can use a contractor saw that you get from your local Kmart. Now I'm just setting my blade to 45 degrees. It's 12 degrees outside and I'm wearing a t-shirt. What's up with that? I have my blade set to 45 degrees. It's time to cut all of these to length. So I'm going to run them through, flip it over, and then run it through again to cut that length. You never want to use your miter gauge and your fence at the same time. It will kill you. So I'm going to use my fence and a spacer to get all of them to that perfect length. I'll pull the spacer out and then run this through couple of hot tips for you. You want to push the pieces past the blade. That way when you're cutting the next piece, the previous piece doesn't vibrate, hit the blade, and then take out your face. And also some of these boards, there's a little springiness to them. They're not laying completely flat on the table. You want to make sure you're holding them down flat. Otherwise, you're not going to get a perfect 45 degree angle and it's going to be a couple degrees off. Next up is to cut a groove to hold a plywood bottom. I'm using 1 8 inch plywood, so the blade is the perfect width for that. Unless you're using a thin curved blade, then you might need to make a couple of passes. So now I'm going to cut this groove along the bottom that's going to make it look like it has feet on the corners. In the book, we do this on the bandsaw. Today, I'm going to do it on my least favorite tool. I thought it was obvious why the router was my least favorite tool, but people keep asking me, David, why is the router your least favorite tool? I don't like the way it looks. I don't like the way it sounds. I don't like the way it makes dust. I don't like the way it'll take off your fingers and you won't even know it. If you cut off your fingers at the table saw, they'll at least be laying there so you can see that your fingers have been cut off. If you do it at the router, it just gnarls them up and then the dust collection sucks up all the pieces and you might walk around for like 10 minutes not knowing that your fingers are gone. I don't like the router, but today, I'm gonna push through my hatred and I'm gonna use the router. Next up, we're gonna cut the plywood that's going to fit into the groove right there. You have to cut this to fit because if you cut it too big, you're not gonna have a successful glue up. A little too small is not a big deal. And we're going to glue in this plywood piece and that's going to reinforce those corners so we won't have to do any extra reinforcements in the joints. A, always, always B, B, C, C closing. closing. Always, always be closing. closing. Always be closing. closing. For the top, we're gonna to use tiles that you can get from the home center. I think this was like 39 cents, and then this one with the pattern was like $1.39, somewhere around there. So this one with the pattern here, that fits in perfect. No modifications needed, but apparently, not all six inch tiles are made equal. And then this white one is slightly too big and doesn't drop in there. I don't know who's in charge of the tile industry, but maybe we could work on our quality control a little bit. So what we need to do is just take off a sliver of wood on each of the four pieces. So I've got my blade just above the table and I'm going to run all four pieces along there and see if that white one drops in. Thank you. 
took off maybe a sixteenth right there. Got that rough assembled and I can drop this in to see if it fits. And that works. So anything with the super cheap white tiles has to be cut slightly bigger. So now let's go glue this up. I went ahead and drilled a hole in the center of all the plywood bottoms. That way you have a place to put your finger to remove the tile if you need to. So now I am gluing this up. And while I am gluing this up, I would like to tell you about today's sponsor and that is Squarespace. If you are like me, and you like making things, which I hope so. I hope that's why you're watching this video. You need a website. You already know why you need a website. You need a website because it's 2022 and you need a place to show off your work. You need a place to get clients. Maybe you want to sell some of your crafts. Maybe you're really good at designing crafts and you want to sell plans for those. You could do that on your Squarespace site. You can sell both physical and digital items. If you went to my website right now, you would see that I sell both digital and physical items as well as merch and all kinds of stuff. I've been using Squarespace for a long, long time, long before they were a sponsor. And the reason for that, it is super easy to use. Like I mentioned before, I used to be a web developer and I got tired of making websites. I wanted to make things with my hands. So I moved over into woodworking and now I make these woodworking videos and I no longer have to deal with the cloud, the back end, all that stuff that you got to deal with when making a website. Remember how I mentioned if you are like me and you make things and you want to sell those things as a thank you to those of you who stick around and support my sponsors and who are watching this, I'm letting you know, and only you know that I will be selling a few of these on my website. I won't be talking about this anywhere else. So thank you for sticking around. If you set up your own Squarespace site, what does that mean? That means you can bring in all of your social media sites into one central place. Maybe you just need a photo gallery to show off your stuff. And Squarespace has a ton of options for photo galleries. Back when making websites used to be hard, and I used to do it for a living, photo galleries was a pain in the butt. Not anymore. It only takes a few seconds. You upload your photos, you choose a few options, and you are good to go. I'm just using this green tape, which has a little bit of stretch to it, to close up these miters. Visit squarespace.com, and when you're ready to launch, visit squarespace.com slash make something for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. My grandpa made this and gave this to me a few years ago. If you don't know about my grandpa, he is 99 years old and out in the wood shop whenever the weather is nice enough for him to be in the wood shop. I've got a great little video that you can go check out and visit Grandpa Pachuto. He's such an inspiration to me, not only in woodworking, but in life. He's got a great attitude. Love Grandpa Pachuto. Everybody loves Grandpa Pachuto. My love of whiskey comes from Grandpa Pachuto because anytime I go over there, he's always asking if I want a little bit of whiskey in my coffee. And uh, I think that's translated to home because now I like a little bit of whiskey in my mouth, if you know what I'm saying. So after the glue dries, it's back over to the router to add a chamfer along the top. We sand everything up, add some finish, throw in the tiles, and we're done. 